Well, good morning. It's good to be with you this morning, church family. I'm excited to be here and to share with you a message today uh, as we move in to the new year, 2021. Uh, this is the, today is January the 3rd, 2021. Uh, We're just getting started into this new year. And I wanna think about a couple of words this morning with you. And those words, I titled the message this morning, starting over. Uh, and I believe it's important that as we look into a new year that we kind of think about those words starting over, maybe starting fresh. Um, you know, I, as I thought about 2020, I, I kind of reflected back on 2020. And um, as I began 2020, I felt like the year 2020 was kind of at a, a snail's pace, right? It was really going very slow for me. Uh, and it seemed like it was just never going to end. 2020 just seemed like it drug on. But now as we neared the middle toward the end of 2020, it seems like everything was just at a, a fast pace, a rush, and it seemed like it just flew by. Like, I, I don't know what happened. But, but uh, it was amazing to me as I thought about it how quickly 2021, or 2020, I'm sorry, came and went. Um, but I want you to take a minute this morning with me and, and just think for a minute this morning about 2020. I want you to reflect over that year 2020 that you had and, and I want you to really think, maybe you've already done it, I want you just to think back about all the things that happened in that year 2020. And then I would ask you, what were the highlights of 2020 for you? What were the highlights? What were the things that you remember most about 2020? What were the good things that you remember about 2020? Think about those good moments for a few, few minutes. I mean, we all had good moments, right? There were good things that happened in 2020 to each and every one of us. We were all blessed and we can thank God for all of those blessings because those good things are blessings that came from that year. And we receive those from our gracious Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what about those not so good moments that we had in 2020? We all had those too, right? It wasn't one or two of us. There were every one of us had those not so good moments in the year 2020. You know, those are some things that we probably wish hadn't happened in 2020. And there's probably some of us that would like to get maybe a do-over on some of that stuff, but, but it will never happen. We'll never get a do-over to, to try to change the outcome of some of the things that happened in 2020. But today and for the next several Sundays, I'm going to start looking forward into this new year with you. And I want you to start looking forward with me into this new year. You know, the first of the year is often when uh, we start to look forward. We start to make plans and, and think about uh, how we can do better in the coming year, in the coming weeks and months. A lot of us make New Year's resolutions, right? I, I don't know if I make resolutions, but I oftentimes say, well, I'm going to try doing this instead of what I normally do and, and try to do a little better uh, or make things go a little smoother for myself. Uh, in the coming year but we we make plans oftentimes to do better uh, as we enter into a new year and I want to look at those words with you this morning starting over or, or starting fresh maybe uh, as we enter into the year 2021 you know we're gonna start this morning by looking uh, at the essential need for a fresh start to starting over and not just a, a not just starting over to survive, right? But starting over to thrive in the year 2021. 
you know, what we're going to talk about today is going to be an essential part of what we're going to talk about in the next couple of Sundays. Um, and what is, and the question I have in my mind is, what is the one essential thing that we need if we want to start over, right? Or to begin a new year starting over fresh, starting over with a clean slate, right? What are, what are we needing in order to do that? And we're going to answer that question this morning by looking at a couple of pieces of scripture in the Bible. Uh, there's, there's a couple of stories in the Bible I want to share with you. And we're going to start this morning by turning to God's word in the book of Mark. Uh, Mark, the first chapter, verses 16 through 20. Hear the word of God. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets, and they followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his father John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, this is the story of Jesus calling his disciples, the first disciples, right? And, and we've read these stories over and over, but I, as I thought about this new year, I thought about these stories of Jesus and, and going up and calling these men that had never met Jesus, right? They, he was calling them to come and to follow him. And Peter and Andrew and James and John were fishermen. They were all men who fished for a living. That's what they done. And, and fishermen were not very high up on the totem pole, right? They weren't uh, high-class citizens, I guess you would say. Uh, and I'm sure it was a respectable job. I'm sure that it was, but there were there were there were other jobs probably that were um, better than being a fisherman, uh, as you can imagine. And there are also things done uh, a certain way in the Jewish society at that time. Most Jewish boys got a early education. Most of them went to school early on, and the goal was to find the best and the brightest and to move them into what they would call maybe a rabbi status. Um, and they would all go to maybe the second grade or so, and then the best were allowed to move forward, right? The smartest and the best were allowed to move forward, and the rest were sent back to find something else to do. They usually would be another calling of those kids or those people uh, a few years later, and by the time they were around maybe... 13, 12, somewhere in that age probably, only the smartest ones were left in those groups. The rabbis would then come and they would select, you know, the ones that they wanted to teach. And they would call those ones that they wanted and then the rest were done. The rest were sent back to whatever they were doing before they were called. Maybe it was fishing or being fishermen. Maybe it was the family business. And I, and I say all this stuff, I'm bringing all this stuff up to take us back to Peter, Andrew, James, and John. What were they, right? What, what were they? They were fishermen uh, that who, who, who went and caught fish for a living. They were people who fished for a living. And that means that at some point in their lives, they weren't good enough, right? And as I thought about that, it just kind of, stirred me this week, uh, the fact that they weren't good enough, right? They had to, you know, at some point they had to be rejected and say and be, be told that they weren't good enough to, to be in that rabbi status. So they were sent back to do what they had always done, to be fishermen. And I can't help but believe that they thought about that often. I can't help but believe that being rejected, right, that, that being told they weren't good enough wasn't something that kind of stirred in their minds from time to time. Maybe it was while they were pulling in those slimy nets full of those stinky fish, right, that they thought about it. You know, what might have been, that's something that probably stuck in the back of their mind for quite some time. If, if they only had another chance, if only they could get one more shot, right? If only they could start over or only if they could start fresh. 
So here comes this young rabbi, Jesus. Here's the chance that they were looking for, right? It was, it was an opportunity that they never saw coming, but, but they had another opportunity. It was a chance to start over. They just might get that chance after all. They only had to do one thing to get that chance to start over and to start rolling on that path, right? There's a second story that also comes in Mark. And I want to look at that with you this morning as well. It comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad because he had great wealth. This is the word of God, again, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the story that most of you know as the story of uh, the rich young ruler. And, you know, we, we have a totally different situation here than we did with the disciples. This story is totally different. This young man seemed to have everything, right? He seemed to have it all. He was rich. He, he had all kinds of possessions. He had all kinds of things. Anything that he desired, he probably wanted. He had all kinds of money, but evidently it didn't satisfy him. He was still searching for something. There was something he was wanting, and that something was eternal life. So what does he do? He comes to Jesus. And Jesus gives this young man a, a quick rundown of the Ten Commandments, right? He, he goes over the Ten Commandments, and the young man seemed to be a very moral person. He seemed to be a, a good, decent human being. And then Jesus tells him to do what? He says, get rid of all your possessions. Get rid of all those stuff, all those things that, that doesn't satisfy him, right? That's what Jesus says. Get rid of all of these things and then do this one thing and you can start over. You can start fresh. These are two very different stories, two very different situations, two very different sides of the social scale. One is a story of the rejected, and one is a story of the unsatisfied. You know, in both situations, there was a possibility for them to start over. There was a possibility for both of these stories to have that chance to start over. The people in both of these situations could get that fresh start, right? And in both situations, there was one thing left that they needed in order to have that start over, right? To get that fresh start. Friends, this morning, it's January the 3rd. We are just starting into a new year. We're only a few days into this year, and all that happened last year is in the past, right? It's behind us. All of that is left back in the future. Whether the past was good or bad, we stand at the dawn of a new year. We stand at the beginning of a new year, and it's, it's time for us to start over. We've got a chance today to start over. And the one thing left for us to get that start over is the same thing that we've read about in these stories this morning. Our one thing to a fresh start this morning is the same thing of Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Our one thing to starting over is the same thing of this rich young ruler story that we read this morning. What is this one thing that Peter, Andrew, James, and John had to do to get that start over this morning? What is that one thing that this rich young ruler had to do in order to start over 
And the question still remains, what is our one thing that we have to do today to start over, to start fresh? Let's go back to our stories for just a moment. Mark chapter 1 verse 17 says, Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishermen of men. That's what Mark 1 17 says. Mark 10 verse 21 says, Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross and follow me. The one thing that leads to a fresh start in life. Are you ready for it? Is to follow Jesus. Friends, this morning, if you want a fresh start in your life, all you have to do is follow Jesus. If you want to start over this year in 2021, all you have to do is start by following Jesus. You want to make this year a year that you'll never forget? Then follow Jesus. You see, our two stories this morning have very different endings, don't they? They have very different endings. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, what did they do? They followed Jesus. And their lives were never the same. Their lives changed for the better. They saw things that no one else had ever seen. They, they got to do things that no one else will ever get to do. And they, they changed the world. And why and how did they change the world? They did it because they followed and they trusted in Jesus Christ. It all started with following Jesus. But what about the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler walked away. He left the only person who could change his life. He turned away from Jesus. When Jesus called him to come and to follow him, he turned and he walked the other way. Friends, he had an opportunity to start over. He had an opportunity to start fresh and to live a life following Jesus. But he decided that he gained enough in the past, right? Everything that he already had, he thought was enough. Yet, he wanted that fresh start. He wanted that chance of eternal life. And the way to get it was through Jesus Christ. But he wasn't willing to give up everything else that he had and follow him. The way that we get to follow, the way we get to start over right in our lives this year in 2021 is the same as it was back then for these men. Starting over begins by trusting in Jesus Christ. You may be a Christian, right? You may have professed your faith in Jesus Christ. But you've been maybe playing at this Christian game, right? You come to church on Sunday morning. You, you come to church on Easter or Christmas. Or you come maybe once every now and then on Sunday night or Wednesday night. But you really haven't let Jesus lead you. You really haven't let Jesus guide you. You've been walking on your own path for so long and, and telling Jesus to, to follow you rather than you following Jesus. And now it's time. It's time for you this year in 2021 as we began a new year to start to follow him. That's what we're going to talk about in the coming weeks uh, and over the next couple of Sundays. Um, but right now, I want you to just make that decision this year that you're going to, to change by, by getting serious about following Jesus Christ. I want us to, to desire to make a change in our life in the year 2021. You know, you may not even be a Christian. You may be uh, very similar to the, to the rich young ruler as we read about earlier. And you may have a lot of stuff. You may have a lot of possessions, right? And, and, and we, we sometimes quickly realize that having everything in life, having all these possessions, having money, isn't all that it's really cracked up to be. And oftentimes we know deep down inside that there has to be more to life than just being wealthy or just having everything that we desire. There has to be something more. And you're right, there is. Honestly, there is a lot more. And you can find what, what, what I'm talking about. You can find that, that something more 
by following and trusting in Jesus Christ. Friends, if you want a fresh start this year in 2021, start this year by trusting in Jesus. Start this year by following the one who came, who lived, and who died for you and for me so that we could have that opportunity that the rich young ruler wanted, the opportunity of eternal life. Will you do that with me this morning? Let us pray. Father in heaven, God, we are excited to start into this new year. Father, this year 2020 that is now behind us brought some worry, some anxiety. Uh, and Lord, we know that that worry and that anxiety can roll over into this new year, Lord. But let, help us to, to learn to cast our worries and our anxieties up on you as you ask us to, Lord. Help us to, to give you our worries and our cares, Lord. Help us to look fully to you and to trust fully in you as we move boldly into this new year. Father, we pray that you will lead, that you will guide, and you will direct us. And we pray, Lord, that, that our hearts and our minds and our, our lives will be focused this year in 2021 on you. We pray, Lord, that our, our government, we pray, Lord, that our country would turn to you in 2021, that they would seek you and your will for our lives. And Father, we know that if we'll do so, we will be blessed over and over as we are already blessed. Father, we love you and we thank you for all the blessings in this life. And we ask now that you would go with us as we leave this morning from this time together and that you would help us, Lord, to take the love of our Savior Jesus Christ and the light of this world, and to shine it in all the darkness, and, and open others' eyes, Lord, to know that you are King of kings, and you are Lord of lords, and that you are still seated on the throne this morning, and that you love your children. Help us, Father, to seek you in all that we do. We ask all these things in your mighty name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for being with me this morning. I pray that you have a, a wonderful Sunday, and I pray that uh, you have a wonderful week as we start fresh on Monday in this new year of 2021. God bless you all. Have a great day.
thy presence all the days another year of mercies of faith Of witness for the